Figuring out the weight of the load that you're lifting is one of the first things you should do when you're writing your lifting plan. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do just that. Welcome back to the Lifting and Rigging channel. My name is Devin and today I'm going to take you through one of the most important steps in your lifting plan, determining the weight of the load that you're about to lift. We'll look at the pieces of gear that you need to consider into the load weight, some simple methods of figuring out the weight in advance without doing any calculations whatsoever, and then of course we'll wrap up by working through the calculations and formulas themselves, both of simple and complicated shaped loads. So first let's dive into what pieces of gear you need to consider into your plan. The total weight of the load must account for every piece of lifting gear involved in that lift, and I mean everything. The hook block, the lifting beams, the shackles, the lifting slings, and forgetting to factor the other pieces of rigging hardware means you're starting your lift with a flawed lifting plan. So let's look at a few different methods of determining the weight of a load. First, look to see if the weight is marked on the load itself. Sometimes manufacturers place the weight on the load for shipping purposes, so the weight may already have been spelled out and calculated for you. So if you can find that, it can guide you to the right rigging equipment for that pick. Second, look for engineered prints or design plans. Product prints and engineered drawings of the load may indicate the final assembled weight of that load, and it might even help you find a few anchor points that you didn't even know existed. You can also review the bill of lading or shipping documentation. If the load that you're about to lift was shipped or transported to your location, there should be some type of weight information on that shipping paperwork. It had to go on that semi-truck, they had to count for that when they were driving, so you might already have that covered. If the load is a product or piece of machinery, the weight of that load may be indicated on either the paperwork that was provided by the manufacturer, any information on the manufacturer or distributor's website, or the product specifications in a catalog or product brochure. Those are all good reference points to start. There are a few times when you can add other devices into your rigging that can provide a readout and determination of the load weight when it's lifted slightly off the ground. Now, these devices measure and display the weight of a load in a few different ways, and some of the more advanced ones, probably the more expensive ones, can even send the readout to handheld devices or remote workstations to help gather the correct load weight before you make your lift. And if none of those options work out for you, then it's time to figure out how to calculate the weight of the load all by yourself. So let's look at some calculations and some formulas. So a lot of these formulas you've probably already heard of when you were going through school. These are just refreshers. So determine the volume of a load. For a rectangle or a square specifically, volume equals length times width times height. For a hollow cylinder, it's a little more complicated because volume equals 3.14 times length times the wall thickness times the diameter minus the wall thickness. For complex shapes, in some instances, imagine the entire object is enclosed in a rectangle and then calculate the volume of that rectangle or you can break that object into two or more smaller rectangles and then calculate the weight of each part and then add them together. Step two, determine the weight of the material you'll be lifting. You can use a material weight table to figure out the pounds per cubic foot of material you'll be lifting. Step three, determine the weight of the object. Multiply the approximate pounds per cubic foot of the material times the calculated volume of the load to get the weight of the object or the load itself. All right, so now that you know the steps, let's calculate the load weight of an aluminum block that's six feet long, three foot wide, and four feet tall. You start with step one. You gotta determine the volume of the load. And again, volume is length times width times height. So six times three times four gives us the volume of 72 cubic feet. Step two, determine the weight of the material you'll be lifting. Using this table, we see that aluminum weighs 165 pounds per cubic foot. Step three, determine the weight of the object. Multiply the volume of the load, 72 cubic feet, by 165 pounds per cubic feet, which gives us the load weight of 11,880 pounds, or 5.94 tons. This next example is gonna be a little bit more complicated, so we're gonna slow it down a little bit because there's a lot of different phases to get through this. 
For this example, we're gonna look at a steel pipe that is eight foot long, has a three foot outside diameter, and a wall thickness of 1.5 inches. As always, you start with step one. You determine your volume, and it's a little trickier since you're using feet and inches in this calculation. So the formula is volume equals 3.14 times length times wall thickness times the diameter minus the wall thickness. And so before you can even run this calculation, you've actually got to convert your inches into feet and then provide it. And so 1.5 inches is equal to 0 0.125 feet. And now that you have those all converted, now you can actually calculate your volume. So 3.14 times eight feet times 0 0.125 feet times three feet minus the converted 0 0.125 feet reforms your calculation as 3.14 times eight feet times 0 0.125 feet times 2.875 feet. And that gives you a volume of 9.03 cubic feet. And again, that's more complicated, but it's important that you understand the steps and you take your time as you go through them. Step two, use the table again to find the pounds per square foot of steel which using our table is 480 pounds per cubic foot. Now you can perform your calculation. 9.03 cubic feet times 480 pounds per cubic foot gives you the load weight of 4,334 pounds or 2.17 tons. For complex shapes, the goal is to simply take a complicated shape and make it simpler by breaking it into smaller, more understandable pieces. And so for us, this example, we're going to look at how to calculate the load weight of an irregular shaped concrete block. First, the goal is to break down and separate the two objects into normal rectangles and then to calculate each section individually and then combine them. And so what we've done is we've broken them into a top part, which is 3 feet by 2 feet by 4 feet, and a bottom part, 3 feet by 2 feet by 9 feet. And then your steps are the same. Step one, determine the volumes. The volume of the top is four feet times two feet times three feet, which gives you 24 cubic feet. The volume of the bottom is nine feet by two feet by three feet, giving us 54 cubic feet. The total volume is volume one plus volume two equals the total. 24 cubic feet plus 54 cubic feet equals 78 cubic feet. After doing that, then you can move on to step two, determining the weight of the object itself. Using the table again to find the pounds per cubic foot of concrete, which using our table is 150 pounds per cubic foot, we can continue our calculation. So take your 78 cubic feet times 150 pounds per cubic foot, and your complex concrete shape is approximately 11,700 pounds, or 5.85 tons. Like anything, learning to apply these formulas will take time and practice. And so to assist you, we put together this load calculations pocket guide. Save it to your phone, save it to your computer, use it for reference anytime you need it. You can also grab our lifting and rigging best practices infographic. This is another tool you can use to ensure that everything from operator training to environmental conditions have all been factored into your lift plan beforehand. I hope this video was able to help give you a better understanding on how to calculate the weight of a load before your next overhead lift. Math is not magic. It's just understanding the steps and the calculations that you need to apply. Now, if you're working through this on your own and you're not really getting it down and you need some help, don't hesitate to reach out to one of our lifting specialists. They'd be happy to help you, to walk you through it, to help give you an even better understanding of these lift plans. Now, if you like this video and if it was helpful to you, please like it, share it with your coworkers, and maybe even subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future videos that we make. For all of us here at Mozilla Companies and for the Lifting and Rigging channel, my name is Devin. Thank you for watching.